Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to things I've made in the past. Old photos, old jewelry I've made, old clothing I've made. And I thought it'd be fun to take a little journey down memory lane because believe it or not, while this business I'm currently in is fairly new at a couple of years and I'm slowly building it up, um, I have been making things and selling them for 10 plus years and I never really found sort of like where I fit in the e-commerce world. Um, I've sort of always had a style, I would say, that even now I keep that is like simple, classic, but whimsical if anything and a little quirky and fun so um i'm gonna start off by showing you some photos and i'll intersperse some jewelry that i actually have here that i have left that i didn't even realize i still had left um and yeah let's just get into it whenever i'm looking at a photo on my phone i will make sure i put it on the screen for you guys to see so these aren't really in any particular order but i'm gonna start from the ones from fashion school because oh boy um to be honest i still like some of these like i i am not at all ashamed of anything i've ever made Except maybe my sister's grade 8 graduation dress because it was exceptionally short and because we're both plus size I was determined to make something plus size and I didn't really get any direction and so I had no idea what the hell I was doing. So please excuse the Instagram filters. I used to use um, one that made it look like an old film photo. Um, so just warning you ahead of time. Also keep in mind that for a lot of these, I was a student and I was just learning, so some of these are projects as well. So yeah, um, okay. <sighs> now that that caveat is, is said, this is the first photo I could find, and I called it the petal dress. Um, you can see why. Uh, so it is layers of petals as I called them. There is a bottom skirt underneath and to be honest I might have this in a suitcase somewhere. I have clothes that I made from school stored in a suitcase under our stairs but I wasn't about to get those out because like I can't try them on for you um, and they're not gonna look their best because they've been in a suitcase for like 10 years. So um, there's like this overall like greenery pattern on the top like the bodice then there's these like hanging individual flaps that are all finished with a bias tape i love bias tape it is literally my favorite way to finish something um it just it just makes it so easy and it looks so good and it gives the edge of something like structure when it's finished i would still use it today to hem stuff um if i didn't feel like folding it up you know um anyway this is the pedal dress it was a halter it had a big like tie that tied in the back which i was really into um for a while keep in mind this was like 2005 2007 maybe yeah yep um and i wasn't allowed to make anything besides like this size either so um individual layers of fabric all layered up and sewed together each individually finished this was for my knitwear class um one semester we had to make something out of a knit material which is like a t-shirt material and then the other semester we had to learn to um machine crochet or machine knit hand knit or crochet and um i learned to crochet and you'll see that project later so uh, next up is my first ever play suit or romper. So I called it a jumpsuit mostly because I didn't realize there was different names for like shorts versus um, long pants. So long pants are a jumpsuit and short shorts are a play suit or romper. And this, this is like the mock-up muslin of it um, and how it fits. I was so happy with this. Um, 
I even put pockets in it. Um, it had this huge like tall collar that stood up and buttoned all the way to the top. It was honestly, it was a showstopper. I love this thing. I would probably wear it today or I would make it again today. If some maybe with a little less collar. Um, and I think it, it honestly stands up like if it was all one color. I was very into like the nautical theme at this point in time. Even the buttons have little like anchors on them. Um, yeah. Okay, so on to some jewelry. I started making jewelry when I was in college. And I just, it was something to do. So I started an Etsy store. Um, I didn't make tons of money at it, but I was having lots of fun and that's kind of what happens when you have access to all those materials. It just let me experiment and have fun. I wore the things all the time and people bought them off of me at school. Um, I also made jewelry for people's final collections for school, which I don't really have pictures of um, unless I go back through those photo albums on my Facebook. I might be able to find some of that. Um, so yeah, this is uh these like drippy chain earrings um it was basically just stones that had little like um pegs through it and then like really curled and attached to the chain um they were like long and sort of sparkled because they were orange and yellow um and they kind of looked like you were wearing fire on your ears i liked it then I started making these bracelets, which I never really used good quality like wires, so it would always tarnish. I never really thought about those things. I just thought, oh, I'm going to make this cool thing. This one sort of looks like a cuff, and it has a really easy release um, mechanism for getting it on and off. You just like pinch it, um, so you can get it on and off on your own. And I honestly think this would look really cool now um, with just better quality wire and maybe like all one color of stone. I really liked mixing colors. Um, I still do, but like most people would want like all one color. All right, this is my crochet project. And I, how I wanted to make accessories because I, well, we weren't allowed to make clothes. I had started, I crocheted an entire bikini and then my teacher was like, no, you can't make that. And I was like, well, I've already made it. Um, and she made me take it apart. So this is something I basically did last minute. Uh, they are huge like cuff bracelets. Um, as you can see that like it, I was inspired by cupcakes. Um, which were a huge thing then, like everybody had a cupcake shop and there was just cupcakes everywhere, so. Um, yeah, I, I hated this. In fact, I hated learning to crochet because that particular teacher, even though I was paying to be there, uh, I'm left-handed and she essentially said, I refuse to teach you because you're left-handed. She taught everybody else how to crochet and knit, but I was told, go look on YouTube. And this was like, before YouTube was really a huge thing, she's like, go to YouTube. I'm like, mm, I'm pretty sure I pay you a lot of money to teach me to do this properly. So, uh, one of the people in my class taught me, actually. This is, we're getting into the filters now. This was on my, um, on my Instagram account. Wow. Uh, as you can see, I still even have some of the artwork up. This was probably, like, seven years ago. Um, this skirt is still a cute skirt, um, just not in style. It has a zipper all the way down the back. I love zippers. I love how they look. I love how they sound. It's like, just, um, there is like iron-on studs at the waist that like point in the mid, like in. It was meant to be like slimming, I guess. That was my idea behind it, but honestly, this is really cute. I wish I had the picture of the girl who wore it for me, who modeled it for me. Um, because it looked really cute on her. Ooh, okay, this is a time when feathered earrings were really popular. Like, you know, like festival feather earrings? Um, and they were one of my most popular selling items. Um, I would sell them for like 20 or $25 a, a set. And so there was like a whole bunch of like chains hanging down and then I wrapped the ends of the feathers in wire and then hook them to the chain and honestly they were a lot of fun um they were a pain in the ass to make um 
but they were a lot of fun and I sold I don't know probably 200 pairs of them um, the whole time I made them which was awesome Ooh, okay this belt here uh, was part or was supposed to be part of like my final collection these like um, flower rosettes were part of like my inspiration um, in the materials and things like that they never made it um, I don't think anyway um, I think I had a different kind of trim belt um, yeah it's just like you're not even gonna get to see most of my final collection for school um, I'll just show you one piece because I don't have the photos of the other this was a booth for a show I did when I went it was like my only ever out of town event I went to the Glebe in Ottawa and it was like um a maker's market my mom went with me um I don't know yeah I just like I brought my clothes I brought my computer and basically was like you can order from me like custom order didn't sell a single thing um actually you know what I think someone like bought the jacket or something like that I think I ended up like donating most of these clothes that skirt you see on the mannequin there it's um panels and each one unzips so it's like a four or five inch wide panel and so it gets smaller by four or five inches so you can basically it was like sisterhood of the traveling skirt okay these brooches were so funny um i have been reusing materials for ages i basically hunted down small toys i even found like little lego minifigures and turned them into necklace charms um and I sold them at this store called Get Funky and I sold so much stuff through there because I just made really fun like jewelry and small accessories and clothing and I would sell like a hundred to two hundred dollars a month of stuff out of that store so I made all these brooches um I like they're all like little animals there was a hippopotamus a camel a bear an elephant a rhinoceros yeah it just um they were a lot of fun okay and this was another huge seller for me that i would make all the time you know when fascinators were like a huge deal well i used to make button fascinators which is why i have so many buttons now and in fact i've gotten rid of like a whole shoe box full of them already um and just kept my favorite ones and this started when my grandmother gave me a bunch of buttons from her sewing room so I sewed each individual button on and they would take me hours and I sold them for like 20 bucks there's a metal headband in there because I wanted um, and then I've like I've sewed it to felt sandwiched the metal headband in there and then another layer of felt and a ton of hot glue honestly um, they were like very very popular and very cool and I layered them all up and I did the monochrome like that and I think I even made a white one for someone's wedding which was like I participated in someone's wedding. actually I've I know for a fact that I've participated in at least two weddings because I made an engagement ring for somebody yes it only cost them $30 but they wanted something that I that had been handmade specifically for them and was like their style and made by an artisan and they couldn't afford like you know to pay somebody to custom make them something so my friend bought a ring from me to give as like a temporary engagement ring until they could afford to get something nicer which I thought was really fun these were so much fun and such a pain in the ass to make they are tiny dog dresses for a like three pound Yorkie. I made 12 of them, okay? And they gave me all the fabrics, um, or no, I bought all the fabrics and then they gave me like a pattern that they, or like a picture or something and I just made them. Honestly, I had to hand, like I had to smock everything so that it like scrunched in. Apparently this dog won't go out without a dress on or without clothes on. They just like the feeling of wearing clothes. And wow, they were a coworker when I worked at Walmart and she paid me, legitimately paid me, to make her dog 12 dresses. This skirt I still love today um, and would probably wear if it was my size. This is just like a basic like 
fluffy skirt. Um, I think it has a zipper down the back. I can't really remember. Um, okay. Then there's this Elvis fabric that I absolutely love and actually makes an appearance in one of my really early YouTube videos. Um, I do like a lookbook of things I've made, which was surprising or like summer looks or something like that. I can't remember. I was inside. I filmed it inside, which was weird um, because it was like summer outfits or something like that. Anyway, so this one has a zipper down the back, so it's not stretchy, um, but I bought a ton of this fabric. It was, like, the Andy Warhol print of Elvis on, in, like, a fuchsia on a bright green fabric back, which, it was just, it was so much fun. I loved it so much. Okay, this is when I started actually, like, making plus-size clothes. I did like attempt it for a while but the market in Kingston was just not there at the time and I was I had them in Get Funky when they were open um and I sold them myself but honestly it just I would have had to price everything so high and people were not prepared to pay that much at that time for handmade things and since then I probably could start offering plus size clothes but in all honesty, it's just like you have to make so much stuff and spend so much on materials in order to make the clothes for them to possibly not sell. And so I'm just like, I'm not interested in doing that at this moment in time. So, uh, okay. This, yeah, I honestly, this is so much fun. A bright green. You can see I sort of had like an aesthetic going where, um, this is a bright green like bamboo jersey and then I got this like printed heart material with a peplum um, and the peplum is finished with a bias tape all the way on the bottom that's why it stands out so much yes okay this is a dress that I made for myself and I looked like a sister wife I looked like a sister wife that was allowed to wear knee length dresses um I hated this dress so much like it fit fine it looked uh, awful um I just uh, yeah okay here's more of this Elvis fabric so you can see it better I actually went and made these skirts with an elastic waistband sort of like um what's the skirt okay so you know my leopard pleated skirt that I showed you in that things I've made um video well it was sort of like that except this is just um, a cotton Elvis fabric and honestly it's really fun um, and I kind of miss it but like it's just not my style anymore um, if it was black and white or gray even I'd put totally into it okay this fabric just tickled me so much it's little Vespas it's little Ves Vespas and this is a mini skirt so um, the fabric wasn't very wide and I wanted to get two skirts and I had to cut like so I just cut the fabric in half lengthwise and then you know sewed it to this wide waistband um, and actually I sold out of those which was um, pretty interesting considering it's a sheer ish material so people just wore shorts underneath. Alright, this is my sister when I forced her to model something for me. So I made this cute little double-breasted jacket, which uh, is adorable, but the sleeves, I'm terrible at sleeves, okay? I just want you guys to know that I am not great at sewing in sleeves. They somehow ended up with, like, pleats on them instead of just, like, light gathers that, like, blended in nicely. Um, so this is her idea of modeling when she still had braces and hated everything, so... I mean, she still hates everything, but, like, yeah. I didn't even match the buttons. I was like, meh, I can't be bothered. This is a dress I made for my friend. We're not even friends anymore. Um, I love this material. The top is, like, a silver gray, so it sparkles. Um, and then when you put it on, it kind of looks like you're wearing a strapless dress over a t-shirt, which was really cute. Uh, she looked awesome in it. I'm just gonna say that. And, um yeah I just made it for her because I can and uh she's the only person I've ever really made like spontaneous clothes for I love these belts still um I would love to find a way to make belts in the future but this was like my first foray into sewing leather um actually no 
I put suede on my final collection for school. But um, I don't even know where I got this leather from. It was something that I cut up. Alright, so this is getting into more recent things. I actually have a video on how to make this on my channel of how to like make a recycled leather pouch. Um, this was made from an 80s suede dress that had like this swoosh of green across it um, that went like across the sleeves, across the body, across the sleeve again. Um, yeah, and with like a metallic piping through it. Uh, <laughs> Wow, um, let's just say my sewing skills with leather have gotten a lot better and my pouches look a lot better when I make them now. So I still make this product now, um, I just, you know, basically I've been making these for the Claire Closet since then and they're handy to have, honestly they work great as makeup bags, um, because you can wipe them down on the outside if it's leather and... I, my, my friend Claire has had one for like four years and it's disgusting, but it is still going strong. This is one of my final collection pieces for school. Um, I made the entire look, so she's also wearing a fascinator um, that you can't see. And I have to, like, I don't think I have a better photo. Um, I can't remember who took this. It was either my friend Jennifer or Farzad. Um, but we were on the roof of, like, a music shop in downtown Toronto um, next to a strip club. So that wall behind her is a strip club. And we were posing in front of it. And... The security guards from the strip club kept poking their heads out and going like what are you guys doing we're like we're literally just doing a photo shoot and they thought we were trying to like sneak into the strip club and we're like we have a 17 year old out here like actually I'm pretty sure she was still 16 um so this dress is entirely made of linen uh it cost me a shit ton of money to make um then there is fabric origami butterflies that are all hand folded hand sewn and then hand placed on the dress and then like sewn down so they go from like small to big or big to small I can't remember um I still have this dress somewhere um and it's beautiful but Jesus Christ it was a wedding dress um it has a little bit of a train and everything um but uh like it was so much work so much work but I still love it. This is probably something you guys have never seen. And it's a little baby backpack uh, made out of a printed vinyl. Um, I didn't like the style and so I didn't make it. Um, I also didn't like using all that webbing because it was all like a polyester, like plasticky webbing. And I try to keep as much plastic out of mm, things as possible unless it's recycled and this stuff wasn't. So, so there's only a few photos left and... These are from when I first moved back to Kingston about eight or nine years ago. Um, and just take a look at the credit in the bottom corner. So that's Claire Bouvier Photography, i.e. my friend Claire. This is how we met. I contacted her on, I don't know, she says Kijiji, I say Model Mayhem. I'm pretty sure Model Mayhem doesn't exist anymore and was just a place to like get skeeved on by dudes. Um, who are photographers. Um, anyway, so I have known Claire since I moved back to Kingston from school. And I made this collection um, right before I moved back. And this is her sister, Rachel, modeling it for me. Rachel was still in high school. Um, and this is the waterfront area uh, where, like, down by my mom's old work, and we just went out there and shot these looks. There's a few photos that I'm missing that I really, like, I need to find them because I love them so much. Um, but these are a few that I found. So, like, this dress was made out of, like, a ponty, like, knit material. Has a zipper all the way down the back. And the shoulders are encrusted with, um, like, metal spikes that I had to, like, hand put in. They're, like, they screw on from the back. And it was very heavy, actually. Then this dress is made out of 
a silver lame um, fiber knit so it's completely open at the back with a zipper from like the lower back to the hem the front is fairly conservative it's like up here um, and then I just added like little ties at the back because otherwise it wouldn't stay up so honestly I still love this photo today um, Claire definitely edits her photos a lot differently now um, but yes I love it this place still exists today um, there's a lot of Rachel's butt in this like a lot I'm sorry Rachel um, this skirt is the one that was on that mannequin that I said got smaller and smaller and smaller so it starts at like a size 1x and it can fit Rachel's size which um, I guess she's probably like a small um, so just imagine we just took panels out and like zip them back zipped it back together so yeah it's a pencil skirt like um, high-waisted and then the top is like a jersey material that's like super light and it's double lined like a cami top um, yeah I just I love it I love this skirt it's kind of genius but also was hard to execute and those zippers were a total pain in the ass so um there's even more photos that I'm missing, probably lost on my Facebook or something. Um, I will maybe find them and do a part two. That would be really fun. Ooh, I have jewelry items. Okay, so these are some jewelry items that I found in my stash that, um, like, I don't really didn't even realize I had them. So this necklace is just a slice of agate in a natural tone and then, like, a thicker... Um, chain uh, honestly I would probably take this apart now and just put like a really light chain on it um, and still wear this type of stone um, or like put it this way put a little charm on the bottom and then like attach a chain up here to go around your neck anyway I'll probably take this apart and reuse it because I love the, the stone and then I have this super long one here uh, this one I've won a few times, but to be honest, based on where the holes are um, drilled through it, it doesn't sit nicely. And um, I like the dark chain, but nobody else really seemed to. So it sits really long. Like, it's under my boobs now. Um, so yeah, um, I would probably, again, reuse this somehow. And in fact, I probably will. Um, so yeah. Those are them. Then I have these earrings. So this was a style that I thought I would use or do more. Um, it's just beads. But these are new beads that I bought. Um, I will probably, again, take these apart and reuse them. I just really like the beads. And so I don't want to, like, sell them because I like the beads so much. That is so stupid. But, like, yes. Anyway. Then I've got these rings. So these are the rings I used to make all the time. They, my friend actually sent me a picture of, she still has one that I made for her. Um, and they used to call them like uh, art for your fingers because they're so, it's just like a bunch of different beads and the base of the ring has all these like holes in it that you can run the wire through and I would just like pile on beads and I had this one that was made of clear quartz and I would wear it on my left ring finger um, and people would ask me if I was engaged pretty regularly because how huge it was and yeah and this one this one is really fun so you can see, like, the ring bases tarnish quite a bit. I wore this one all the time. Um, so you can see, it's, like, so sparkly and so much fun. Oh, my God, it still fits. It still fits. They're adjustable, but, like, I might start wearing these some more. Like, they are a lot of fun, and I love rings. They just kind of look like bubble gum. That Well, this one does. It reminds me of bubble gum. Yeah, and so I just collected all kinds of beads and would just have at it and like wire wrap them and it was a lot of fun. Um, I was thinking about like bringing back the style and then I realized that I got rid of all of the um, ring bases. So, I don't know. Um, because I have tons of beads now that I found through like 
thrifting and stuff but yeah anyway so that's all I had sort of still left of stuff that I've made um that isn't like in the last year so um yeah thanks for watching I'm sorry this video is so extra long but I have been making things for a very very long time um if you have any questions or comments or whichever leave them you know in the comments and I will see you guys soon bye